Welcome to my news show. It's Friday because that's when I'm going to be doing these news shows from now on. And two things went through my head when I thought about moving this to Friday. And one is... I'm going to have a week and a half of news, so I'm going to have a lot of news stories to do. And the other thought that went through my head was, well, I have a week and a half to do this, so I can just write these articles tomorrow. And now it's Friday, and I had to write most of my articles this morning, so oops, I guess that didn't really help me. And also, I don't really have more news stories than what I feel like I usually have. I will say they do seem a bit longer than my average news story that I have, but it's probably because I just ended up rambling, so my mistake on that. But I guess news story number one. Valve is adding more restrictions to Steam trading in order to minimize cheaters. This probably doesn't make sense at first, but the way many cheaters tend to work is this. The user will have a main account, they will use that account to purchase a certain game, then they will gift that game to another alt account and cheat on that one. That way, when they get banned, they don't get banned on the account they care about. There are two main changes that they are making. The first one makes it so that any game associated with Valve Anti-Cheat cannot be added to your Steam inventory. Instead of being able to stockpile a certain game, which I assume people would do during a sale, you have to gift the game immediately. The second change, and probably the biggest change, is actually a ban on the one doing the gifting. If you gift someone the game and that person ends up cheating and getting banned, then you won't be able to gift that game to anyone anymore. I don't really know how much this will affect cheaters, because it doesn't seem like it removes them. People can still create a second account and buy a game straight from that one. It might slightly inconvenience them, but it probably won't cause them to stop. If Valve really wants to stop cheating, someday they will have to start banning credit card numbers and PayPal accounts from purchasing from their store. I do wonder if this will affect key reselling websites like G2A. If you don't know how these websites work, one of the possible ways to resell a digital game is you buy a game from Steam and place it in your inventory. After that, you enter in the gifting link that Steam gives you, and you are essentially selling access to your gift link. I wouldn't be surprised if a known cheater would buy a discounted game from a website like this. Then if that person gets VAC banned, it affects the user who is trying to resell the game. This whole change seems like it will mostly affect people who are just trying to gift or resell a game, by making them paranoid that they might give the game to a cheater rather than actually preventing cheating. DICE has released two more Battlefield 1 trailers this time focusing on specific parts of the gameplay. One trailer is about the weapons in the game, and the other trailer is about the vehicles in the game. In the weapons trailer, DICE goes on to explain a large variety of weapons they are putting in the game, ranging from bolt-action rifles to semi-automatic shotguns to fully automatic LMGs, even different melee weapons that are more than just a remodeled knife. The vehicle trailer makes it look like it's going to be heavily focused on vehicle combat, and I guess that's what they were going for. They're changing the way classes work with various types of vehicles. Each plane or tank is going to have a class who has special abilities to be able to perform their task. What those abilities are, we don't really know. And it looks like there are actually going to be different kinds of tanks and planes. In the battlefields I have played, there was only one type of tank and two types of jets that were exactly the same. I don't know if DICE has done any trailers similar to these in the past, but I always like these kind of trailers that include commentary by the developers of the game. There's just something about it that makes it seem a little less corporate. I'm really looking forward to this game. I haven't been this excited about a Battlefield game since probably Battlefield 3. I really hope that this doesn't just feel like a reskinned Battlefield game. And from what I've seen, and what I've been told by these videos, it seems like it won't be. I always have to wonder how they're going to deal with balancing when it comes to on foot versus in vehicle combat. It seems like they are making the tanks even more powerful than in previous games, where you will be able to just drive straight through buildings and walls. I also wonder what kind of weapons these vehicle classes are going to be given, 
because in the past, anyone could drive a tank and it didn't matter what class you spawned in with. As long as you have the tank itself set up beforehand, you could just hop in and you would be just like any other person in a tank. Soon, we will be able to have all the Dead Rising games on PC. For the Dead Rising 10 year anniversary, Capcom is remastering all the old Dead Rising games, importing them to PC and current gen consoles. All three will be released at the same time on September 13. And those games are Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2, and Dead Rising 2 Off the Record. I don't know if every game will be remastered for the PC or just the first one, because I don't see any Steam pages for the remastered games. It would be nice if the remastered versions were just updates to the current game, so people wouldn't have to purchase the games again. The trailer is advertising the games to be playable at 1080p 60fps. You know what game I want to have 60 FPS on? Dead Rising 3. You know, the one that was most recently released, the one that locks the frame rate at 30, the one that even if you unlock the frame rate it still runs terribly. Either way, this seems pretty cool. A couple months before Dead Rising 4 is released, you can play the original Frank West and compare the two. We Happy Few is getting its first big update soon, kind of. Currently, the only way to play the update is if you enable beta updates on Steam or GOG. Yes, a game which is in beta is also having updates that are also in beta. Deal with it. I haven't read the whole changelog because it is very long, and since I don't own the game, I'm not too concerned with it. You can read it for yourself by clicking the link in the description, but it changes some of the issues people have with the gameplay. Like, the biggest complaint that I've heard the most is the survival elements. They are increasing the amount of time the player can go without eating, drinking, or sleeping. They are increasing the durability for some tools and weapons, and many other things that I'm sure people are happy about. We Happy Few was the game I was excited about, and not to say that I'm not excited about it anymore, but from what I've seen, it looks very different from what I expected it to be. I still think it has the potential to be great, they haven't ruined the game for me yet, but I have to agree with a lot of the complaints I've been hearing. It just looks like another survival game right now. I thought it was going to be some kind of stealth game that required you to blend in or sneak around to get from point A to point B, but currently it's just a survival sandbox game with crafting elements. Jim Sterling made some videos about the game in its current state, and I recommend watching those for more information on the game itself. I'm just supposed to report the news, and this is outside of the news topic, so I won't go any further. I went to Polygon this week. Remember how I complained in older news videos about the amount of Pokemon Go articles I saw? Well, it seems like No Man's Sky has mostly replaced those news articles. I'm not surprised. In fact, I would like to point out that I called it last week. But since there's so much news, I'm just going to keep it fairly short. The PC version of No Man's Sky is coming out today, and at the time of recording this, it currently is not. So when it is released, when I'm editing this, I might just have to give you a barrage of text with all the PC news I can find. But, even better than news, I can just give you procedurally generated text. The biggest question people have about the PC version are the settings, and most importantly, the FOV sliders. I was concerned about this too, because every time I saw a video, the only thing I could focus on was the awful default FOV that they have on the PS4. Sean Murray did confirm that FOV sliders should be in the game, so if that is the main selling point for you, there you go. You can now play No Man's Sky without getting sick. One interesting story I came across was about two people who tried to meet each other on the same planet. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a happy ending because they were never actually able to see the other person. Even though this game is meant to be an online game, it looks like just a bunch of people playing single player and uploading game information to a server that everyone has access to. Sean Murray has said, sort of, in a few different interviews that online play is something that is possible, but not likely because of the massive amount of planets. Will you be able to play with your friends? 
Yeah. Can you grief other players? <laughs> A little bit. If you ask me, it sounds like he knew it wasn't possible, but he thinks he can get away with saying it because of the amount of planets and the small chance that it would actually happen. I guess he didn't think it through completely though. Because here's the issue I have with this. He knows a lot of people are going to be playing this game at the same time. It's obvious because people gave him death threats whenever he delayed the game, so he knew people were excited about this game. He then set a goal that is to reach the center of the universe. Most people are going to try to do that. So all these players are slowly converging towards the same location, making it inevitable that two people are eventually going to end up on the same planet. I don't want to say he lied, but I wouldn't be surprised if he planned on adding the feature to see other players later on in the game's life. Unfortunately, someone beat him to the punch. Before I get to the closing section of this video, I want to mention that uh, Sean Murray did like a, a question and answer on Reddit, so I guess I'll put that in the description. It There's a lot of stuff there if you want to read through it, so I'm sure that'll answer some of the questions you want, but whatever, that's up to you. I have two very small news stories. I don't even know if I would call them stories, but I don't know what else to call them, so I'm gonna continue calling them stories. Witcher 3 is uh, getting a game of the year, so all the DLC is finished and out. Um, I probably should have looked up the release date for the game of the year. That's my bad, but it, it'll come sometime in the future, and also, Speaking of Witcher 3, Gwent, the closed beta launch, has been moved to October 25. So if you were waiting for that, uh, I guess you have to wait a little longer. But other than that, um, I will have links in the description to the various articles and trailers I used in this, so check them out if you want. And rate the video accordingly, and subscribe if you want weekly news. Thanks for watching. Bye.